Am I live? <laughs> Hello? <clears throat> Alrighty, welcome everybody to New Generation Wrestling. I am your host, Ted Dickens, and boy do we got a stat card for you tonight. Man, I've been stoked about this show all week long. The main event of the evening will be Shiloh Gray debuting here on NGW, taking on the unstoppable George King. But we're going to start things off with Son of Sheik teaming up with Angelo Woods. And what there's a poll that created the team name of Iron Woods. I am so excited for this team. They will be taking on hashtag fly or die. How you doing, Solar? They'll be taking on hashtag fly or die who need the uh, momentum. You know, they've been losing to Birds of War the past three weeks. So, yes, they're looking for that uh, that much-needed momentum. And right after this match, we got Raiden versus Odeo Jr. And we'll talk about what happened before the show with Odeo Jr. and Case Hunt later on. Of course, same thing can be said about George King. But I'll go ahead and bring up George King right now. George King attacked Zach Smith during an interview, which seems to be the trend tonight. Attacked him during an interview and hit him with the Royal Flush on a traveling crate. So there's no news on, uh, there's no update on uh, Zach Smith's health. But I uh, can assure you he's not going to be able to compete tonight. Not that he was booked, but, you know, even if he was, he's gone. But this tag team match, man, Iron Woods, I'm excited. Wait, what's this? What? Iron Sheik is attacking Angelo Woods backstage. Look, I'm confused. He came here to be in a tag team with Angelo Woods, and now he's attacking him backstage before the match. Son of Sheik is beating the living hell of Angelo Woods. I have no idea what's going on. Angelo Woods is fighting back, throwing an elbow to his face and catching him with a sling blade. Maybe he'll be able to get back into this. I don't know why Iron Sheik, you know, even attacked him to begin with. You know, he had given us word that he was coming here to be in a tag team in the NGW universe, the CMV universe, wanted him to team with Angelo Woods. And now that he is, he attacks him before the match, but Angelo is bringing it to him now. Angelo's not going to let uh, that stab in the back, that quick and sudden stab in the back before even, anything even got, you know, underway. He's not going to let that hold him back, but Iron Sheik, son of Sheik with that headbutt, sending him back into the locker room. They're going all over the place, raking his eyes. And they're just stomping down on that knee. What is son of Sheik's problem with Angelo Woods? Now he has a steel chair. This is not good, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, right across the back. I just gonna stomp on him. That knee to the back of the head. He's just gonna sit there and taunt. Oh, but he misses the kick. Angelo Woods is back up to his feet. He's just gonna knee him in the gut. Trying to get back into this. Oh, but she. You know, that steel chair slowed down Angelo. No, it has not, though. Angelo with the Russian leg sweep. Still do not know his reasonings for this, but oh my goodness. Angelo Woods. No, not on the chair. Oh my goodness. Tombstone pile driver onto the steel chair. Son of Sheik is beating the living hell out of Angelo Woods. They were supposed to tag team here tonight. It was an exciting thing. There's polls about it and everything. The CV Universe practically made this team, and Son of Sheik just turned his back on all of them. 
Just throwing them into the the lockers. Now he's just gonna stare at them, playing mind games. I don't know what he's doing. Gonna wait till you can look at him in the eye. I cannot believe the son of Sheik did this. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, a power bomb right into the locker area. Right into that cubby area. His back has gotta be in pain. I don't know how he's fighting back. He's got a tombstone under that chair. He's gotten power bombed into the lockers. Son of Sheik, oh my goodness. Now he's just gonna dive off that traveling crate. Son of Sheik is, I don't know why he's doing this, but he's making, oh my goodness, that military press power slam though. Son of Sheik came here making us think that he and Angelo Woods was going to have this amazing tag team. You know, we thought that they were going to face hashtag fly or die together. You know, CMB Universe, they voted on this. They voted on this team. And they created this team, basically, and Son of Sheik caught everyone by surprise and attacked them backstage. Hit him in the back with a steel chair, pile drive them, tombstone pile drive them on that steel chair, power bombed them into the lockers, and then finally hit him with a military press power slam on the concrete floor. Angelo Woods is hurt. He is hurt. Nonetheless, the show has to continue. As we see Odeo Jr. versus Raiden, and I mentioned something between Odeo Jr. and Case Hunt happened earlier tonight, and I was going to mention it during this match, or before this match, rather. Odeo Jr. attacked Case Hunt during an interview, beat him with the torch. I mean, Case Hunt, he fought back, but uh, he was hesitant on using that lit torch on, uh, on Odeo Jr., so... Odeo Jr. took advantage of that hesitation and beat the hell out of him with the torch, threw the ashes in his eyes, and hit him with a cutter onto a steel chair. Like I said, the brawling seems to be a uh, seems to be a a trend here tonight. Case Hunt is scheduled for a match, but I am receiving word from the general manager. Greg Hollister, who says that Bob Storm will be taking Case Hunt's place in his match against Simon Hancock in the co-main event of the evening. So it will no longer be Case Hunt versus Simon Hancock due to Odeo Jr.'s actions. It will now be a former tag team champion Bob Storm taking on the newcomer Simon Hancock, and here he is with that same torch, that torch that caused so much damage before the show. Like I said, you know, all these combustible egos in NGW, we're on week four since NGW launched. There's already chaos ensuing, definitely on this show tonight. We had George King attack Zack Smith. We had Odeo Jr. take out Case Hunt. And we just seen Son of Sheik turn on his tag team partner before they even got started. Completely brutalizing him. And look at that cocky grin on his face. He, he's happy about what he did to Case Hunt. The fans are booing him. They don't like that. He's blowing that fire out of his mouth. He's happy. He's cocky. Confident. He's just a sore loser, if you ask me. But now, tonight, he gets a chance at redemption against Raiden, who's nearly unstoppable since NGW launched. Here he is, one of the fan favorites, Raiden. Beat Mike Miles on week one. Beat Luke Jetty week two. Week three, he and Case Hunt beat Odeo Jr. 
and Luke Jetty in a tag team match in the main event last week. And now he's looking to continue his streak of dominance and take out Odeo Jr. I don't know if he and uh, Case own are friends, but if they are, you can't help but think he's doing this for Case as well. Odeo completely blinding him backstage and hitting him with that cutter under this. It was busted wide open, taken to the hospital. What's up, Gumble? Great, and he's pumped up though, as always. He's always ready for a good fight. Here we go. Technically starting the show, not the first match was canceled due to that brawl. Here we go, Odeo Jr. immediately punching Raiden in the face. Going for something, but Raiden rolls him up. One, two. Oh, I thought that was it. I thought that was going to be it. Odeo Jr. would have got upset. He would have threw a fit for sure. Raiden slams him down to the mat with a suplex with authority. Bounces off the ropes. A little boom, leg drop. Action there. Nice going right up on the top rope. This isn't good. Oh, just an elbow drop, though. If it was a Phoenix Splash, Odeo would have uh, had flashbacks of last week. Odeo with that jawbreaker. Whips him up again. Ice whips him to the ropes. Catches him with a back elbow. Dude, Gumball, I would have too. <laughs> I thought it was going to be it. It takes him down with that, that drop kick of some sorts. Odeo with the jawbreaker, but he can't quite capitalize as he gets drilled with a German suplex by Raiden. Odeo, you, you've seen he has a mean streak. Definitely seen that when he attacked Kaysan earlier tonight. As he slams his opponent down with a Northern Lights suplex and stomps on him. There was that elbow to the center of the spine. Like I've said before, you know, calling matches in the past. Different companies. I've seen men, you know, they they get taken out just by uh, their backs being focused on. Going for something, but Odeo flips out of it. Doesn't let him capitalize. Gets him up. Electric chair. Electric chair drop. Inverted electric chair drop. Look at that, just taunting to the downed Odeo Jr. and just stomping on him. Not letting him get up, bring him up to his feet on his own. Irish curse backbreaker by Raiden. Going for the pin. Hooking the leg. One, two, just a two count. Raiden's been in control for the majority of the match. Odeo's tried to, you know, come back from it, which he is right now. Yeah, I remember though, Odeo hit. Raiden with two of those cutters last week, but if it wasn't for Case Hunt, he would have beaten Raiden in that tag team match. But instead, he got pinned off the Phoenix Splash. Raiden going for that inverted electric chair drop once again. More of an electric chair face buster. Odeo using his head once again. But his punch is blocked. He gets hit with a jab and a sling blade. Oh, man. That was his signature sling blade. You know what usually comes out, uh, uh, what usually comes next after that, but uh, Raiden's not been able to hit it. Odeo's trying to stay on the attack, not let him get on those top ropes. That's where he's most deadly. Drops him with a back suplex. Turning in midair, slamming him on his neck. Really brutal looking. Yeah, at least somebody recaps, Gumble. <laughs> oh, man, Odeo was going for something. I don't know what he was going for, a choke slam or something. He was taunting for something, but Raiden didn't let it happen with that headlock. Just wrenching the neck. Dropping him with a hurricanrana, pinning him. One, two. Oh, nearly a three count. You know, Raiden with those, those pin combinations. Pin combos is really uh, getting Odeo. Almost got him twice. 
the start of the match with that roll up and then right now with that Hurricanrana and now he's on the top rope this is not where Odio wants to be as he hits the Phoenix Vice is what beat him last week one two just a two count Odio was able to get the shoulder up as I said last week it only took one but maybe he prepared for this despite being in sort of a tussle with Case Hunt. I say sort of a tussle because Case Hunt got some offense in, but it was mostly one-sided with Odeo Jr. beating him down with that torch. Now Odeo's in control. He's going to Irish whoop him into the corner. Turn him around for something. What's he going to do? Oh, man. Gets up on the top rope. Oh, man. That... Fist drop and a drop kick. Drops him with a double foot stomp to the chest. Oh man, Odeo is pumped. Like I said, he, he's meaner than he ever has. Blocks the first super kick, but goes for the second one. Vintage Odeo Jr. going into the pin. One, two, just a two count. Raid's not gonna get his first loss just yet. He's still in the game, still in the fight. Drops him with that jawbreaker. Another sling blade. This is not looking good for Odeo. Just got a taunt to the crowd. Dabbing to the crowd, actually. Braden's not going to let him get that cutter, but Odeo, he knows he needs it. Braden with a back elbow. Going for a choke slam, but no, Odeo blocks it. Those elbows and slams him. Neck first into the mat. The nasty back suplex. I was just going to talk to the crowd. Oh, man, he's calling for that cutter, though. Oh, man. Odeo hits him with the cutter. This may be it. One, two. Just a two count. I thought that was it for Raiden's little streak. Been undefeated. His momentum is high up there. Raiden with the Luger landing. Big fan. The Alpha World Champion. Missed that kick. Nodio takes advantage with a German suplex. A nasty German suplex. Oh man, goes for that kick again. Raiden's always able to block the first one, but the second one takes him down. Odeo's right where he wants to be. He's got the fan favorite Raiden on the mat. And he's calling for a second cutter. Can he finally get a win and finally deliver a loss to Raiden? Let's see. Hook in the leg. One, two. Oh, my goodness. Nearly a three count. Odeo is mad, man. He is upset. He thought that was it. So did the fans. So did I, really. That's calling for something. Raiden's getting to his feet. Odeo's waiting for him. That missile drop kick right to the face, bringing him down to the mat. Odeo stomping on the mat. He's still pissed off about that, that kick out, that nearly three count. He thinks he should have got it. He thinks the ref should count faster. Stomps on his arm. What is he going for now? Oh, man, Raiden with an arm drag. Much needed uh, shift. Another sling blade. Raiden. This comeback. One, two, just a two count. Raiden thought that was it. Odeo's giving him a good fight, a very good fight, in fact. Drop kick to the back of the head. Oh. Raiden taunting to the crowd, letting them know, you know, their hero still stands. Oh, man, Raiden back up on those ropes. Like I said before, he's most dangerous when he's up there. Phoenix blast for a second time. One, two, three, and Raiden remains undefeated and is victorious over Odeo Jr. <laughs> Odeo Jr. has not been very successful at all in NGW, you know, the four weeks. He's been, he's 0-4 right now, but that's what's making him very dangerous. That's what made him dangerous when he took out Case Hunt earlier in the night. 
It makes them mad. It gives them a mean streak. But it wasn't enough to take down Raiden, who remains undefeated. That Phoenix Splash, one of the deadliest moves in his arsenal, one of the deadliest moves I've ever seen. It would have, Gumble. Look at Raiden. Kicking things off the right way. Which if you was in the stream earlier, things were supposed to start off with hashtag fly or die going at it against the newly formed team thanks to you all with the polls on cmv.com. Iron Woods, you know, son of Sheik and Angelo Woods teaming up together to take on hashtag fly or die. You know, I was excited about it. A good tag team match if you ask me. But... Son of Sheik, you know, something snapped. I think he just fooled us all, really. He attacked Angelo Woods backstage. Pile dropped him on a steel chair. Power bombed him into the lockers and hit him with a military press power slam on the concrete floor and knocking him out cold. And I'm receiving word Angelo Woods, he's in bad condition. He's in the hospital suffering from a concussion. But when we missed out on one tag team match, we get this one. We've seen Birds of War be successful for the past three weeks. And despite Ched losing last week, Twisted Cheese have also been successful in you know, a tag team match. And despite them only having one match, one tag team match, they're going to go at it with Birds of War. Two goofy personalities, if you ask me. Both teams have been proven to be very deadly and dangerous in that ring. You know, you want to hate and you want to laugh at Twisted Cheese. You know, about how they carry themselves and dance to the ring and smiling and so cocky and confident about their music, which a lot of people don't like. I don't know why I love it. But you got to admire what they can do in that ring. Birds of War, of course, James Falcon was successful against Sebastian Armstrong last week. Beat him in one-on-one -on -one action, keeping his team's momentum up. Birds of War have been very, very dominant. But, like I said, so, it's twisted, so has Twisted Cheese. So this can go either way, if you ask me. Uh, instant classic, I'd say. Like I said before, <clears throat> there are talks of tag team championships. And I can confirm there's been several more unknown tag teams signed. Signed to the uh, the show. So hopefully we'll be able to see them in the next next couple of weeks. Who knows what <clears throat> Greg Hallister has in store for the tag team division on NGW. So up in the wind, but who knows? And we he also confirmed that with two weeks to spare till Checkpoint Miami, he will announce all three competitors of the triple threat match for the NGW Championship. I can't help but to think Raiden's a definite choice for that. Being so successful. Undefeated. They had a great match with Odeo Jr. Way back and forth. Here they are. I love... And they, they made this song, by the way. Their theme song, they made that. So fabulous. Look at that jacket. Look at these guys. They know how to dress. They know the fashion trends. Look at that. Just having fun down in the ring. The way they carry themselves, it's so confident. You just got to admire that. 
Zola has some of the best tattoos I've ever seen. You gotta really admire that smiley face shaved into the band leader Motsi's chest. That happy churl from Romano. I was about to say Ramona. <laughs> Twisted Cheese ready for some action. With Motsi in their corner to support his brethren. And here's Birds of War. The fans have really grown to like these two gentlemen. There's James Falcon jumping up and down. Chris Eagle, I believe. Gumble, correct me if I'm wrong. Chris Eagle's the one in the mask. I'm always getting it wrong. You know what, yeah, James is the one jumping up and down. He's the one that's always so excited. And Chris Eagle is the one that's always got to make sure he keeps his composure and, you know, does the right thing. But James, he just likes to have fun, which is something, you know, Birds of War and Twisted Cheese could have in common. But tonight, it's all about who's the best. You know, who's going to be the future of this tag team division? The Birds of War, they've... They've really started out on the right foot, so Twisted Cheese definitely has a big challenge ahead of them. I'm excited for this match. Let's start things off with Chris Eagle and Romano. Romano instantly going to take him down with a snapmare. Bring him to his feet with a lifting reverse DDT. Strong start by Romano. Going to drop that knee to his chest. Look at that. What? He's just going to take off the turnbuckle pad. Already being dirty, Romano is. Look at that, Zola trying to grab him. These guys, like like I said, you know, they've been, as a tag team, they were pretty dominant, so we didn't get to see their uh, them at 100%, so maybe we will here. They face Birds of War already with a game plan, it seems, taking off that turnbuckle pad. Now he's going to tag in Zola, the powerhouse of the team, the big man. Zola with a strong punch to the gut. Chris Eagle throwing him up against the ropes, but he misses him there. Then he drops him with a DDT. At that hairdo of Zola's. He's got to tag in his partner, James Falcon. They have no problem taking on the big man. You know, he took, that, he took out Sebastian Armstrong, who was a pretty big guy last week. But Zola, however, takes him down. James takes his legs out from underneath him and stomps on his one near his groin. Zola with a back body drop. Stomps on the leg. He's got to tag in Romano. Man, with those slaps though from James Falcon. Now he's going to drag him into the middle of the ring and slam him with a power slam. A simple power slam. Romano with that arm drag. How you doing, Batman Bateman, EC3? Welcome to the stream, man. This is NGW. And man, Romano drop. Just gonna stomp on that arm. Like I said, you know, Birds of War, they may seem like jokes to you, but they're very deadly in that ring. Clubs them over the back. And I'd say they're as hardcore as their music. I was going for that hunch of the gun. He lifts him to his feet. The strength by James Falcon, but no, he can't do anything with it because Zola delivers those strong elbows, punches him with a big right hand, and drops him with that, that elbow to the chest. Tagging to Romano. 
Takes him down with a backbreaker. And he's going to try to work on that arm. But James Falcon doesn't allow it. Punches him in the jaw. A Pele kick by James Falcon. He's going to tag in his partner, Chris Eagle. Who seems to be the more mature member of Birds of War. Takes him down with a butterfly suplex. This is going to stomp on his face. And knee to the side of the head by Romano. Going to do something with the legs, but Chris Eagle kicks him off. Gets back to, to his four ears. Is he going to fly? He's calling for something. Use the ropes as leverage and go forearm. And it drops into a headbutt, headstand headbutt. Look at that. Look at them abs on display. Really wrenching that neck, wearing them down. Mono, however, drops him with a jawbreaker. Didn't, didn't, didn't drop him, but you know he got up, changed things around, and drops him with a clothesline. Kick to the back of the head. Brings him to his feet. Sidewalk slam, no backbreaker. Just got a hole in there, rinse the back over his knee. These men, they just want to hurt their opponents. Oh man, get up on the top rope almost as fast as Raiden does with a diving knee drop to the chest. That's deadly, whoever does it. Romano seems to know that move very well. Oh, right to the exposed turnbuckle. I forgot about that. He's going to do it again. Oh, man, that back by Chris Eagle. Chris Eagle's back, and now he's going to do something. Oh, man, a face buster by Romano. One, two. Oh, nearly a three count, but James Falcon breaks it up. Zola was unable to hold him off. They would have got the win if it wasn't for James Falcon. <laughs> exactly, Solar. You don't know if they're a, a comedy gimmick stable or a deadly heel stable. That's what makes them scary. The unknown. Now you can be cracking jokes with them backstage. Turn around. They'll just take your head off with a freaking electric guitar. And Zola throwing up against the ropes and taking them out with a f fucking... Forgot the name of it. I had it on the tip of my tongue. Flatjack. Sent into the corner. Chris Eagle is trying for something. But Zola shifts momentum. Puts him upside down in the corner. He does not want to be there. And Zola just shoves his foot in his face. And he's just scouting him out. Going for something. But Chris Eagle able to take him down with an arm drag. Oh man, another arm drag. Chris Eagle, though, he's tired. Kick to the gut. European uppercut. And now, a nasty neck breaker. That's going to tag in James Falcon. James brings Ola to his feet. Irish whoops him into the corner. Oh man, throwing him. Shoulder first in that ring post and I just remembered something. You know, you gotta remember with that turbuckle pad on Twisted Cheese's corner taken off, they won't be able to hit their tag team finisher. It may have been on this. Oh man, lifted him up to his feet. A spinning sidewalk. I guess. Look at that. Just kicking him in the side of the head. Birds of War got, has Twisted Cheese exactly where they want him. Got that big man tired and wear down, but he's able to fight back with that fucking shoulder block. And look at that giant headbutt. I can hear that all the way from over here. 
Oh man, drops him with a clothesline. Drops him with another clothesline. And it's gonna arc. Man, all that weight brings him down in a cross body by Zola. Zola's a big man too. That and then tickle, I can tell. And Chris Eagle able to stay in it though. I mean James Falcon taking him out from the legs. Zola doing the same though. There's Moria, yeah, it's a reversal fast. Oh no, man, he's calling for something, bouncing around, bouncing off the ropes. What's he go? Oh, all that weight sitting on his chest, holding him there for the pin. One, two, just a two guy. I have no idea how, how James Falcon was able to kick out of that. He was glitched there for a second. He doesn't know where the hell he is. He's going for that shoulder claw, but James Falcon able to power out of it, punch him in the gut, punch him in the face, drops him with that kick. The Falcon kick. One. Romano able to break it up though. Keep his team in the game. Zola takes his legs out. Zola needs that much needed tag. He's tired. Oh man, what's he going for here though? Headbutt right to the freaking groin. What was that, the midsection? I don't know, his head's so big. Tags in Romano. Romano, look at that. Leading into the corner, just telling him, bring it. Is that all you got? This is the birds of war we keep hearing about. James Falcon says yes. Takes him down with the legs with that agility. Pitting him, just a one count though. Going for it here, has him in the seated position. Going for something, head scissors. Elbow to the top of the forehead. Oh man, he's going for that deadly maneuver once again. That swinging face buster, Zola's tired. He's just taunting to the crowd. Romano trying to tag in his tag team partner. James Falcon's not gonna let it happen. Romano's hurt. James Falcon throwing him into the corner. Can they get that, that brain buster combo? Oh man, that brain buster frog splash combo that they win most of their matches off of. They hit it on Romano. Oh, but he doesn't go for the pin. Romano takes him back a few steps with that. Jawbreaker, but he's not able to capitalize, but it's just reversal back and forth. Hits him with that spinning forearm. It's gonna stomp on his arm. Oh man, he's gonna try to tap him out. His bow and arrow. Bending his back over his knees. Is he gonna tap out? No, he's not. Oh man, that nasty knee though. A nasty knee strike by Romano. Taking him down instantly. Not even going to let him do anything. Not just rolling around Gator Row. Romano, success. <laughs> I do. Fashion. Man. This bout, though. This match. Chris, oh, look, Chris Eagle arguing with Motsi. He doesn't see uh he doesn't see Zola get tagged in. Romano throws him back with a pump handle suplex, and now Zola's calling for something. They're right in the he's right in their corner too. Going for something, but Chris Eagle blocks it and takes him down. Chris Eagle. Trying to Irish whoop into that corner. He's going to try to do that combo again. Zola's not going to let it happen, but he gets a big boot to the head. He said, you're getting in the corner anyways, but Zola's still not going to let it happen. Instead, Zola has other plans. Oh, he's going to use that corner again and choke him out with his boot. Yeah, that finish would have been pretty great. And Zola gonna Irish whoop him into the corner. I keep forgetting about that exposed turnbuckle. He's not able to hit his tag finisher. They just want to use that corner as a weapon more like. But that, you know, minus is the amount of tag moves they're gonna do. 
Romano, I mean, with that suplex, that classic suplex. That's not every day you see someone lift a big man like that. It's going to roll him up. No, he's going to kick him in the side of the head. He may be out. He may be out. Go for the pin. One, two. Just a two count. And just for good measures, James Falcon goes into the ring, knocks Romano off the apron. And fucking kicks Zola in the back. Look at that head scissors, though. Chris Eagle's in control. That's where he wants to be. Taunting to the crowd. I just swoop them in the corner. If they can hit that combo, it's over. Oh, man. They're going to hit it. Rain Buster followed by a frog splash. Look at that. One, two, three. And Chris Eagle wasn't going to let Romano get into the ring. He was blocking his passage. James Falcon gets the victory for his team after that. Nasty combination. And Birds of War is still undefeated. Not only tag team action, but one-on-one -on -one action. Yeah, Chris Eagle was just talking shit. Saying his music sucked. Pissed him off. Took, him, took his eyes off the game. Off the prize, I mean. What a match that was, though. It could have gone either way. I just think, you know, they messed up taking that turnbuckle pad off. There's a few times I could have hit their tag finisher. Deadly cheese wheel. No, like Tulsa Tyler, actually. Got the name of it for a second. But we didn't get to see that this week. Instead, we seen that nasty brain buster frog splash combo. One wasn't enough, but two certainly was. Birds of War there. Making it strongly no noted that they are going to be the leaders of the future tag team division. They're the best. And they're the future of tag team wrestling. <laughs> A deadly cheese wheel. <laughs> Out of context, that would sound kind of silly. I know it was called lactose intolerant, but we didn't get to see it this week. Instead, we see birds of war come out on top. Once again. Very impressive. Now, coming up next is Simon Hancock. We got to see him last week take on Manwolf in his debut match after two weeks of teasing his debut. He came out. He brought a he brought a whole you know, circus, not circus, but rather like a whole front row of women to watch them. I enjoyed it. Some of them were hot. He calls himself the best. He's the, the sex bomb. Yeah, he came out earlier tonight just like he did last week. Entourage, thank you for that word, Gumble. He came out earlier tonight. Simon says, boo all you want, he said. It won't change the fact that he's the masterpiece of this business. And he thought he was taking on Case Hunt, which he called him Chase Hunt, then called him Mike Hunt, which I don't like saying out loud because it makes me look like a douchebag, but we've seen and heard Case Hunt is out. He's being replaced with Bob Storm in this match. May have to change this theme song though. Copyright issues. Don't want them getting sued by Schmitty. And here he is, Bob Storm. He had a match with Shed two weeks back, but he was unsuccessful. He's wanting to come here just like. A few other fellow former CMV members. You know, he was uh, part of Genesis, part of the tag team of Furious Frank, Fast and Furious, former world tag team champion. But he's here to start things off as a singles competitor. He wants to start it off right. 
But like I said, you know, he failed against Chad. Now he has a chance against Simon Hancock. Has a chance to shut him up. Look at that. That entourage of women, though, in the front row already out here to support Simon Hancock. And, of course, they're booing the masked man, Bob Storm. Because they're on the Rude Rooster's cock. <laughs> Get it? His Hancock. Look at that. Bob Storm. What seems to be Case Hunt's tragedy not being here tonight could be his ticket to the top. He could be very impressive here tonight. Gain some very much needed momentum. And here he comes. The fans booing him. He's calling him fat. He's calling him stupid, stinky. Anything he could think of to degrade him. And make himself look better. The sex bomb. One of the biggest ego maniacs I've ever seen. But you gotta admit, it looks pretty great. That tan. Glistening in the lights. Simply ravishing. You know, the fans like to chant and call him Rude Rooster. He don't care though. Look at that entourage of women. Practically wet at the sight of this man. Is there anything, Solar? And I'll just say you're calling him out or talking about him. What up, Pellish? Yes, of course, we'll see George King take on the debuting Shiloh Gray, who we've seen before on Fusion and Genesis. Nonetheless, right now, it's Bob Storm taking on Simon Hancock. Simon Hancock made very quick work. Last week. Oh, look at that body his forehead, though. Already being dirty. What is that? Oh, but he missed the punch. Look at that leg drop. Bulldog by Bob Storm. Oh, man. He thought he was going to make quick work out of him, just like he did the Man Wolf. But Bob Storm's no Man Wolf. He's a former tag team champion, he says. He can hang with the big dogs, and he will. Look at that. Taking the fight to him, flying in the air, and he's being impressive right off the bat. Look at that, kicking him in the head with a big kick to end things. What the fuck? And look how big Simon is, though, towering over him. What is he, 6 7? Dropping him with that super kick. Look how massive his legs are, how strong and sturdy they look. Just imagine getting kicked in the jaw, full force by this man. Bob Storm doesn't have to imagine, though. He's experiencing it. And look at that. Now he's just going to shake the hips. His entourage, they're, they're loving it. But the other fans, the fat asses as he'd call them, they're not. They're cheering for Bob Storm, taking him down with a drop kick to the back. Bob's just going to drag him into the center of the ring. Go for that combination of kicks again. Kicking him right in that face. That face that he loves so much. Now he's calling for something. Simon getting to his feet. All right, kicks him back. Look at that. Smart man moonsault. Turned over to a fucking nasty DDT. Very impressive by Bob Storm, but whatever, Simon's still in the game. Slapping him in the face. How disrespectful. Bob Storm throws him to the corner. Hits him with that knee. Goes for the bulldog. But Simon throws him off. Simon has his number. But Bob Storm. He doesn't let that throw him off. But again. Simon not letting him hit another move. But Bob Storm says I'm going to hit it anyways. That very popular sling blade. You'll see it. Most of the time here at NGW, of course, we've seen it. And that match with Raiden and Odeo Jr. Taking him down with an eat the feet. Shoving his face right, not his face, but his fucking foot right into the face of Scott. Dropping him with that face buster. Shades of his former partner, Furious Frank. Now he's going for something. He's calling for something. Shira Rooney. 
Hook and legs, one, two, just a two count. That would have been impressive if he could put down Simon Hancock after all the ish he's been talking. Going for something. Uh, Centon over the top rope. Kicks him in the leg. Dude, why are you always talking shit, Gumball? It's a sheer Rooney. I did not get that wrong, so I'm fucking sad I did. Look at that, just flexing his muscles. Everyone but his entourage in the front row. He's booing. Now he's going for that. Look at that, shaking the hips before he hits this nasty neck breaker. Man, his head snapping off his freaking shoulders. Bob Storm staring into things, though, using his head. Float over. Neck breaker of his own. Um, not on this show, Orbs, but there is another show that is solely for women that I don't host. Somebody else does. Look at that, though. Taking them down. If you want to go to those, and I'll read up on that. Go to the site and talk to Cop. Miss Tackler is he'll, he'll be called on the site. Sure, Rooney is the same fucking thing. Look at that, though. Kicking him in the side of the head. Going for the pin. He could be out. One, two, just a two count. Simon Hancock, resilient. Out. Yeah, you can hear it. He's only been here two weeks, and they already hate him. Punching him in the side of the head. Lifting him with a spinning sit out power bomb. Holding him into position. One, two, three. Oh, yeah, yeah, three count. Simon Hancock is victorious. Just like last week, he is victorious. Now, fans hate it. They're booing, but his entourage of women, they love it. Look at them. I think that one's about to take her shirt off for him. I hope so. No, she's not. It's just a jacket. Damn it. But Simon Hancock is victorious once again, and the fans hate it. He's a showboat. Calls himself the sex bomb. There's one thing you can hate about a guy when he's cocky and has an attitude problem, but when he can be cocky, have an attitude problem, and still whoop some ass. Well, there's not much you can do about that. You can just get pissed off and move on. Look at that, though. Simon Hancock once again. You got to do that. Yeah, look at that, though. Shaking those hips and pelvic thrust. Having a good time. Showing off his bod for the ladies. And now he's going to do that iconic pose. To send things off over to the next match. Simon Hancock, ladies and gentlemen, once again victorious, and this time over Bob Storm. Which, of course, it could have been over Case Hunt, but of course, Odeo Jr., before the show, took out Case Hunt. He beat him down and used his torch through the ashes in his eyes and hit him with a cutter on the steel chair backstage. So many brawls going on. We got a tweet here from Gerard Fisher directed toward King, towards King George every kingdom needs an army and an army needs soldiers let's make a deal King He's trying to sort something out with the King of course we seen them victorious last week in tag team action over Zach Smith and Angelo Woods now here's the main event match I've been waiting for of course, it's George King, self-proclaimed king of NGW, taking on Shiloh Gray, stepbrother of Rest in Peace, Tim LaFave, and Nick Bunn. He's looking to start things off the right way. You know, he wasn't too successful when he was on the main roster, but he's won a new beginning, a second chance, and he gets it here tonight in the main event. If he can take out George King, that'll be a that'll be a big shift of momentum. Momentum that he needs, especially coming in this late.
And here it comes. Yes, I wish I did. I uh, I recapped it at the beginning, but I recapped the beginning of the show. Well, not the beginning of the show, but before the show happened, which a lot of you know shit went went on before the show happened. But George King attacked Zach Smith during an interview and hit him with a royal flush into a traveling crate. Zach Smith. No update on his condition, but he was hurt. He was being stretchered out of the building. Caught him off guard. George King just not letting him. Just not letting him be, I guess. Wanting him to bow down to his feet. I don't know what his problem is with Zach Smith, but he's just a bully. Zach Smith doesn't like bullies, but he's being bullied around, it seems. George King having his number the past couple weeks. Look at that. Throwing that fist up into the air. The fans don't like him, but he don't care. He's starting his kingdom here in NGW, he claims. Self-proclaimed king of NGW. Sporting a new t-shirt. Shiloh Gray, he is pumped to get things started after seeing his brother Nick Bunn taking on the Against All Odds banner. He was motivated to come back here and CMV and try once again to continue the family legacy. Hashtag Gray Matter. Written on his shirt, of course his finisher name. We've seen it plenty of times when he was on a small run in Fusion, on Fusion. Look at that, he's pumped up, jumping up on those ropes. Let the fans know they got the positive vibe kid that they once knew. Well, something's different, he seems a lot more confident. He has to be though, taking on George King. George King's a tower of a man, a strong man at that. We get a tweet from John Reed towards Shiloh Gray. Didn't I kill you? So I don't know what that's about. You know, I wasn't following his entire career, but maybe something happened. Maybe he got attacked, and that's why he was gone from uh, CMV for so long. George King dropping him with that spine buster after throwing him to the corner. You know, got broke up by the fan. Uh, not the fan, but the fucking ref. Look at that. Tire though, I like that. That change, hellish. Working on the arm was George King. Now he's just gonna taunt to the crowd. Look at that, cocky as ever. He's full of himself. You would think, at least, but he's been dominant in that ring ever since the launch of NGW. But Shiloh, we haven't seen him. He's a mystery. You know, look at that though. Backbreaker, neckbreaker combo. There's a mystery to these fans. He's been gone for so long. You don't know what's changed. Dropping that knee to the back of the head. But he slams him down with a power slam. George King, a very powerful man. Back body drop. On the Shiloh Gray. He's going to stomp on his stomach. Oh, now he's going to try to tap him out with a camel clutch. Shiloh, though. Shiloh's showing the strength and slamming him on his back. Breaking up the hole. Not able to capitalize though. George King takes him down with a shoulder block. That knee. Again, taunting to the crowd. He can't tweet there in the match, Solar. Shiloh with a nasty brain buster. We're gonna get into the head of the king. Might as well fucking slam him on his head. And that fist drop right down to the nose. Now he's gonna work on that shoulder. He learned his technical wrestling from his brother. I gotta say, rest in peace, Tim LaFave. We heard the unfortunate news that he passed away in surgery months ago and 
His brother looks so much like him. Nick Bunn has took uh, the banner of Tim LaFave against all odds. You can't help but to think that's motivation for Shiloh Gray to come in here and start things off, start things fresh. He's not able to hit that power bomb though. Gets hit with a face buster. If I know from watching his matches in the past, this kid has heart. He'll keep fighting until he absolutely can't stand back up. But George King's gonna try to make sure of that. Lifting him up onto his shoulders. Royal flush right into the pin. One, two, three. George King making quick work of Shiloh Gray. To prove once again why he is the king. He is dominant in that ring. I don't take anything away from Shiloh Gray. You know, I could use this as an excuse and he could use this as an excuse, but he most likely won't because he's a kid with heart and a kid with pride. But you can't help but to think he has a lot of ring rust. And getting in there with George King has been dominant. Pat oh my goodness! Zach Smith! Zach Smith coming in to attack George King. However, George, George, right on to the attack though. Zach Smith, he's still injured for that Royal Flush in the beginning of the show, well, before the show happened. I thought he was gone. Irish whoops him into the corner. Oh, what's he going for here? Tornado, hot, fucking hot shot. <laughs> Now he's on the other side. What's he going to go for here? Man. Nothing. Punches him in the jaw. I just got to sit there and look at him. He's pissed off. He's not letting him do anything. Every time he runs at him, he has his number. Kicks him in the side of the head. He's just playing mind games. <laughs> Kicks him in the side of the head once again. Oh, but finally, George King throws him back into the ring. Zach Smith was trying to get his revenge, but it could have, he could have failed here. Slammed down into his back. Look at that, fans, they hate that. They wanted, they wanted Zach Smith to come in here and get his instant revenge. But Zach Smith already injured before that show even started. He may have bit off a little more than he can chew coming in here, George King. Not only did he win against Shiloh Gray, but he fended off against his nemesis, Zach Smith, and you can tell things aren't done here. Oh, man. Alrighty. What a show. Let's have a quick little recap. We thought that Son of Sheik and Angelo Woods is going to form the Iron Woods here tonight. You know, the CMB Universe has been voting polls and getting them formed. And Son of Sheik and Angelo Woods, they were supposed to compete in the top of the show against hashtag fly or die. But as we've seen at the beginning of the show, instead, Iron Sheik attacked Angelo Woods backstage. Hit him with a tombstone pile driver into a steel chair. You know, use that steel chair as a weapon. Power bombed him into a locker. And finally finished him off with a fucking military press power slam. That took him down for the count. And, you know, he was taken out of the arena. It, it, it's confirmed that he has a concussion. And the second match of the night, we had... Raiden take on Odio Jr. I said second match of the night, but you know, it turned into the first match of the night because of that brawl. But Odio Jr. failed to beat Raiden. But of course, you know, Odio Jr., he took out Case Hunt. So we see Bob Storm fail to take out Simon Hancock. And then we see Birds of War take out Twisted Cheese. Such a show. And then we see George King dominate not only Shiloh Gray, but his nemesis who came in after the match to try to get his revenge dominated him to end off the show you know with standing tall as the king what a show that was alrighty folks that's it for today if you like what you saw go ahead and slap that subscribe button if you haven't already if you look below the stream you'll see a CMB banner go ahead and click on it it'll take you to our website where you can see match cards promos and all that jazz now as always thank you and goodbye